Hey Lure Enthusiast, it's Zimtex, and today I want to share with you a step-by-step -step tutorial on making your own custom decals for fishing lures, like this one. Custom water slide decals give your lure a professional touch that doesn't really require a whole lot of extra work. While I'm not really a rod builder, I suspect this same process could be used for custom fishing rods. I first got introduced to these water slide decals when I was building plastic models when I was a kid. You know, I'd make model cars, model airplanes, model ships, you name it, I made it. Uh, sadly, I do not have any of those left or I would show you, you know, kind of an example of what I'm talking about. I also started using these custom decals when I was uh, helping my son with his Pinewood Derby car. Um, what we did is we had a, a parent's division and the kid's division, that way that the dads didn't take over, you know, making the car for the kid. And so uh, some of us had a lot of fun making our own cars. And so uh, what I did is I made a themed car for whatever den he happened to be in at the time. And uh, this particular example I have here was the tiger den. And so I made a orange and black striped Shelby GT500. And what I wanted to show you on that is the decals. So uh, I applied this stripe decal and then you can see a little um, Cobra decal right there. And the way I made that is I just found examples of that online shrank it down and then printed my own decals and then put them on the car. So that's just an example of what you can do uh, with your own custom decals. I did another couple of videos here a while back about testing lures and so to do that I made these test dummy lures and all of the fins and the eyes and the gill and these little these little symbols on there those are all decals. Um, I just painted the, the lure yellow and then I applied my own decals on there. You can see you can do text. You can do all kinds of things. Here's a smaller one. It's the same. These are the same image files. They're just shrunk down. So if you were looking for an easy way to add fins or, you know, gills or something like that, you could do that as well. So these are the products I use to make my own custom decals. Uh, the first thing being uh, decal paper here. You basically get six, uh, six of these sheets and they, they look white, but it, it actually comes in two different kinds that I'm aware of, clear and white. Now, I suspect they're both gonna look very similar when you open it up out of the package, but I always use this clear version. Uh, for what I'm doing. Uh, something to note about that though is that with the transparent you won't have the ability to do any white elements, right? Because uh, your printer can't print white. It can print all the other colors but it can't do that. And so if you need white um, you might want to go with the white paper. However, if you do that you do lose that ability to have the transparency through your uh, logo image. So it's just something to think about when you're uh, figuring out what kind of logo you want to do. You get into your software program and you make your own logo. You can do text, you know, whatever your printer can do, uh, you can lay it out. Now I've made a whole bunch of these little um, logos of mine, just a ton of them. And I've just laid them out on the sheet so that I can print out a full sheet it's important though that after you print this, what you're going to have to do is seal that um, to seal the ink and make sure the ink doesn't run. And they sell this decal bonder spray. I've heard of people using other things like polyurethane spray and stuff like that. I'm not really sure how, much, how well that works. I've always just used their decal bonder spray. Uh, it's a pretty small can, but it's just a clear coat. And that prevents the ink from running when you cut these out and you put them in the water, okay? A few other things that you might want to have handy when you're doing this. Um, sometimes you might need an X-Acto knife uh, just for trimming edges and, and cutting custom shapes. Um, mostly I just use scissors. 
and you might want a nice pair of tweezers. Uh, these happen to lock, just kind of handy uh, for the way I do it. And then I have a little bit of water here, clean water and a little tray here. Um, another important thing you're gonna need are some cotton swabs and then trusty paper towel. I always have a paper towel handy for just about everything I do. Before we move on, I wanna talk a little bit about surface preparation. Now on the lures that I make, I'm usually using an acrylic paint, which does not play well with the water that I use on the water slide decals. So I wanna put a protective surface on that paint before I apply the decal. And there's two ways that you can do that. One is to put a full on two part epoxy clear coat. Um, and lately I've been using this true coat, uh, two part epoxy. You can go that route, or if you want to do something a little bit quicker, a little bit thinner, you can use this Kmar varnish. And uh, all that does is it puts a little, little protection between the water and the paint so that you don't mess up the work that you've already done. So let's put a decal on real quick and I'll show you how that uh, works. I'm going to cut one of these guys off. And then I like to kind of cut the corners off a little bit. I don't like sharp edges too much on mine. It feels like a snag point to me. So I trim it pretty close to my image. And something to keep in mind that everything, everything that's white that you see here is going to wind up being clear. So. Okay, now I go on ahead and clip it. It's easier because I don't have to, you know, put it in there and then catch it later. I'll just go ahead and clip it and then I sit it in the water for a second. Okay, that's pretty good. Just a few seconds is all you need. And then you want to dab off the excess water, okay? And this is why they're called water slide because I can slide that off the paper, okay? Now you probably ought to slide it directly onto your lure, but I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna do it this way. I'll get it positioned. Let me zoom it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. I get it positioned where I want. Pretty close. And I'm going to take my Q-tip and I'm going to roll the moisture out from under that. And it's important that you roll the Q-tip and not, not rub it because you can rub through that clear coat and mess up your, your decal. And if that happens, that's no big deal. You can just get another one and try again. You really don't have a whole ton of time to position that. But there's, there's where you're gonna wind up. And then I like to do that right before I do my final clear coat. It's a pretty simple process. And um, like I said, I'll put a clear coat over this so you'll see exactly what it looks like when it's completely done. Got this off the drying wheel and I wanted to show you a few examples of what this looks like with a clear coat on it. You can see the um, edges of that decal kind of disappear. Uh, once you get a clear coat on it. And another thing I wanted to point out is that you can see here my ink started to run just a little bit here on my pen and that's because I did not let it dry fully before I put a clear coat on it. So that's something you need to be careful about. This is a little bit bigger decal I put on some of my bigger lures. One thing you can see on this one is that if you look really closely you can see how the um, decal sort of floats over the surface of the paint. You see that shadow line behind it there? And that's because what I did is I, I clear coated it, then I put my decal on, and then I clear coated it again. So it's floating on a layer of clear coat. So if you want it to be flat on the surface, I would put the decal on over a Kymar finish instead of over a clear coat finish. That way you don't have that space there. But, you know, in my opinion, I kind of like that little that little relief that it gives when it's hovering above the, the paint surface just a little bit. I think it looks pretty cool. 
I'm still going to be making my full build lure videos, but I'd like to start experimenting with some shorter videos like this. They allow me to focus on specific techniques that I get a lot of questions on and allows me to get into them in greater detail. Please leave me a comment to let me know if you like these shorter videos or if you have any requests for future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and makes it possible for me to bring you more content. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you on the next one.